What happens in Vegas clearly does not stay in Vegas because I brought home a nice little bug, but I also brought home a lot of information from the Crohn's Colitis Congress and I wanna go through it with you today in more detail than I did on Instagram and TikTok. So if you followed along over there and you're excited to hear more, I definitely recommend you watch this video all the way till the end. So if you're unfamiliar of what I'm talking about, I had the wonderful opportunity to join the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation at the Crohn's and Colitis Congress that happened in Las Vegas last week. And wow, it was an experience. I feel like I brought home so much more information than I could have ever imagined. I thought I was pretty up and up on the IBD world. And I will tell you as a, as a warning for this video, many of you know that I used to work as a pediatric GI nurse and I used to work with a lot of IBD patients. And if I were to go back today, I've only been out of nursing for about four years. If I were to go back onto my floor today, I would have to relearn everything. I would have to just start from scratch because there is so much going on in the IBD world. It has truly exploded over the last few years and the treatments available and the follow-up studies they're doing, looking at the side effects of our treatments, Oh my gosh. Anyways, this conference, the Crohn's and Colitis Congress, was really designed for healthcare professionals working in the IBD space. There were a few patients there, but overwhelmingly it was healthcare professionals. And my friend Aaron Blocker and I were brought on to be the IBD insider reporters. We were reporting live, most of which wound up on Instagram and TikTok. Like the short videos is really what I could handle while I was actively at the conference. And the way YouTube is designed, you have a one minute limit on their shorts. Whereas on Reels on Instagram, you have, I think a minute and 30 seconds. So I could do a little bit more over there. Uh, if you're interested in seeing just a little bit more of those short videos, head on over there. But if you're unfamiliar, um, Aaron and I have actually known each other for a very long time. We both started our IBD pages uh, mainly on Facebook back in 2010, somewhere around that time. So we connected through that. And we've known of each other for a very long time, um, chatting here and there. And then we got the opportunity to meet and work together in person a couple of years ago. And I think we make a great team. It was kind of one of those things where we met for the first time in person and it was like we'd been friends for a long time, like just fell into step. So um, I think we made a great team in this conference and we worked together really well. And a lot of our videos that you'll see had the both of us because um, we just, I think we had a good dynamic there. Also, I wanna mention that our reporting is not gonna be over after this video. We are going to be part of a session happening on February 27th, a live session that you can register for. Uh, we'll be speaking a little bit about our experience and we'll also be hearing from some of the presenters from the conference. So that is a really good opportunity to hear straight from the experts' mouths rather than us reporting on it. So definitely check out the link in my description below um, if you're interested in that. If you were following along on Instagram, you know that Zach and I both traveled out to Vegas. He came along and he was a great support to me, uh, especially when I was getting pretty tired, <laughs> a good emotional support. Um, and you probably know that we had some delays getting out there, but we did eventually make it. And I felt very fancy because this conference happened at the Bellagio, which meant that we got to stay at the Bellagio and it was very cool. This conference was three days long and Erin and myself were the IBD patients reporting, but there was also Michelle who is from the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation who was reporting on their page. So if you follow them on Instagram or um, TikTok, it was her posting on there. The three of us were attending all different sessions. We tried to split up the sessions evenly so we could cover them. And these were long days. They started uh, usually around 8 a.m. And at least one of the days technically ended at 11 p.m. because there was a reception afterwards. That was 
that was a day. At these sessions for myself, I was taking notes during the sessions when the doctors were speaking, when the healthcare professionals were speaking, and um, taking pictures of a lot of their slides. But what I would do afterwards was film a little bit of my kind of reaction, what I pulled from the session, and that's what was going up online. Um, I didn't have time to sit down like I am now. I had two really big takeaways from this conference, and they were about the medications available, and what they're looking at for surgery for IBD. So I'm gonna share some clips that uh, Aaron and I both took while we were there active at the conference, and I'm gonna share some more thoughts after. What's your favorite part of the Congress since you've been here three times now? I don't know, what is my favorite part? I don't know, you've been here. You'll have to tell me. I haven't been here three times, I've been here. <laughs> is this Just your kidding. second? This is my third time, I Yeah, think. okay, three times. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, the main part is probably learning all the new stuff we get to learn. I mean, this is like the forefront of IBD treatment. This is stuff that's maybe not out yet. I mean, there are potential, yeah. <clears throat> potential se sessions on potential drugs and therapeutic targets and the way that we treat the disease. So there's a lot that's kind of at the forefront of inflammatory bowel disease treatment. Yeah. Which I is super like cool. We focus a lot on anti-TNFs because we're both on, on anti-TNFs. Anti <laughs> but then there's so many other medications out there. You may have even heard of some, but there's more behind that. So the whole industry is just exploding with New treatments. New medication, yeah. Yeah, it's wild because 10 years ago. Well, even this, <laughs> one of the sessions I was in this morning talking about use, treating UC, they were saying that showed a slide of just the past five years. He said a slide of that they used to like talk about or show what you would use to treat UC five years ago is now out of date because there's yeah. been so many new treatments that came out between five years to now. And so they have to, they've had to pretty much update their slides yeah. on, on what they used to treat UC. It was definitely a lot of information. Oh. <laughs> we both went to two different sessions, so we weren't together in them. It can be very overwhelming. And both of us were like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> so it was um, a nice little wake up at 8.30 in the morning to be learning about drugs and all that fun stuff case in studies. depth. Case studies. Yep, case studies. So I'm going to have to share all of these individually with you guys. I have a lot of notes that I took. <laughs> He's my witness. And uh, I will give you a breakdown of them because I'm really excited about some of the stuff they were talking about, especially with perianal disease, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we did learn that the um, sphincter is a very prized possession yeah. for a lot of patients. So. I felt a little offended by that, <laughs> you know? I still have a little rude. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. No need to brag here. So, what has been your favorite part so far of the Crohn's and Colitis Congress conference, given this is your first time at this specific conference? Ooh. You did say you um, haven't really been to many disease conferences. Yeah. I think because this is so medical professional based, there's right. only a few patients here. I really like hearing the empathy that the doctors are giving, right. which I feel like we don't often see when we're in the office. It's very, um, I don't know, white lab coat feeling. It can be <laughs> rushed. This, yeah, it just, you can tell that they do care about their patients and they're exploring different ways to not just approach the physical disease, but also the mental side of it. And I have really been enjoying that part of it. What's been your favorite session that you was in this morning? I know we had a lot of different talks yeah. in certain sessions that have been a little overwhelming, but what was your favorite so far? Ooh, hmm, well, because I'm a little biased with the whole <laughs> proctocolectomy pouch removal of certain intestines. <laughs> I really enjoyed the talks on um, either proctectomies or pouches like J pouches and nutrition and hydration, really getting into the specifics of that because that's one of the biggest things that I know I see with a lot of my community they have troubles with right. and you know people need a lot of help with that so um, and also just exploring the different nutrients and stuff and why we struggle a bit with <laughs> stuff like fiber and, and all that fun stuff so yeah that's uh, that was one of my favorite talks and we still have a whole afternoon left and two more days <laughs> and more days. we're going off of not a ton of sleep and yep. um, different time zone different time zone than we're used to so <laughs> All right, well, we will be back later with more information, I guess, from this conference. All right, it is day three at the Crohn's and Colitis Congress. It's the last day and we are just finishing up here. And we were gonna discuss 
our hopes for the future of this conference, what we'd like to see more of. So what is your answer to that, Aaron? So I would like to see more of the basic science. Uh, so I was on the basic science track somewhat uh, this time, and that's kind of what I was supposed to do. But honestly, there wasn't, in my opinion, there wasn't enough. Um, and uh, basic science is like bench research, stuff that these scientists are in the lab, working with cells and animal models and things of that nature. Um, and it's very important work. It's how we get to treatments. It's how we get to, to drug therapies and, and new things. And I would love to see more of that next year. Um, I know that it's ever evolving and there were some really, really good basic science sessions here. Um, but I would always love to see, see more. And I think that you're a good person to break that down. Hopefully. <laughs> you, you have the background <laughs> for it, so. <laughs> we will see. Um, yeah, and I, personally just because I'm biased with surgery I really enjoyed that they apparently did add more surgery sessions to this but I would love to see more I loved hearing about how they're kind of changing their thoughts about surgery not just to be a last resort but more of a maybe alternative treatment and for somebody like myself who's been in remission for a long time now long long time since 2009 essentially because I had surgery um, I think there's something there. I think there's something good there. <laughs> well, and again, I mean, you're also a good person for that too, with the being an ostomate and yep. having your ostomy and all the surgeries that you've been through. So it's lots it's, of surgeries. Very important. And again, it, it's a really good point is that a lot of people think that surgery seems to be a last resort mm -hmm. effort. And for a lot of people, it's not. A lot of people, it's a treatment. Yeah. So. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to attend in the future and report again. But I think that's it from, yeah, from this, Congress. this Congress. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. I really did try to keep up on my IBD meds and I knew that there was a lot coming out. Um, I have attended a few of the sessions from the American Gastroenterology <laughs> I always this up. The American Gastroenterological uh, Association. I have attended their sessions on some of the new IBD meds, but I just, I look back at my past with IBD, I was diagnosed around, um, I'm going to estimate because I don't know the exact year, but I think it was around 2005, 2006, that time frame. And the medications that I was on was mercaptopurine and mesalamine. And I knew that adalimumab, which is what I'm on now, that came out for Crohn's disease, I believe, 2007. And infliximab, which is also another one of the big hitters um, that you often hear about, that was available for Crohn's disease in 1998. And that's really, that's what I heard of. <laughs> Those were the medications. And I was not put on an injectable or an infusion until very recently, like the last four to five years. One resource that I learned about during this conference that's available on the CCF website is their drug guide, their medication guide for IBD. And I didn't get a chance to look at it while I was at the conference, but you know, I was, I was hearing of the medications, but it really hit home when I jumped on there to look at all of the available meds. There are so many. I, I mean, it just shocked me. I was aware of the immunomodulators like the mercaptopurine or the methotrexate. I was aware of steroids. I was aware of the amino salicylates um, like mesalamine. But now the biologic group, if you click on there, it is so extensive. It is so extensive. And the biosimilars in there are so extensive. And then the new group, the small molecule medications, the ones that are oral medications making it easier for some patients to take, that is now growing. And at the conference, I didn't just learn about the uh, current available small molecule meds. I learned about ones that are up and coming, that are being researched and hopefully will be uh, in the pipelines available to us soon. Now, this was my first conference, as you heard in one of the clips that Aaron and I talked about. Um, it's, it's his third conference, and he has, you know, kind of seen what's been presented in the past, and I didn't realize that surgery, um, or I didn't really expect either that surgery would be a focus, but apparently this year it has become more in focus, and as somebody who was on very basic treatment now, if you look at it, very basic treatment for her early IBD. Um, I didn't know remission until surgery. I went from 11 years old to 16 years old 
never in remission. I didn't know what that meant when people said that I was never symptom free. I was never um, inflammation free when they looked at my scopes and they looked at my blood work. Like there was none of that for me. And so surgery really did help me. I'm very passionate about surgery, but if patients can avoid it, wonderful. It is hard work. <laughs> and there are a lot of um, side effects that you don't think about. You know, you hear about drug side effects, but I'm so encouraged to hear from these doctors about the side effects of surgery, um, hearing about things like pelvic floor therapy, looking at nutrition and hydration guidelines that are really getting specific for patients that may have, um, you know, an ileostomy like myself or people that have J pouch surgery or different pouches. Um, I was so encouraged to hear that because oftentimes I hear when it comes to J pouches or ostomies, um, when it comes to hydration, just drink more get those electrolytes. I was really encouraged to hear specifics about it. What these sessions have done for me though, and I, I wish I could have brought every single IBD patient that watches my stuff, wish I could have brought you along, been a fly on the wall or something. It really made me look at my past with IBD and kind of analyze, you know, use myself as a case study, like what went wrong, what could have been different with today's current treatments, how could life look differently for me now? And I mean, it really could look different for me now, but what's done is done, right? But it really encouraged me for the future. Having a disease like Crohn's disease, I am not cured even though I've had surgery, I still have uh, nearly all of my small intestine and esophagus obviously and mouth and Crohn's can appear anywhere through there. So there's always that chance that the medication I'm on could fail eventually. There's always a chance that I could flare and inflammation could become my current reality. And to know that I don't just have one other anti-TNF option. I have stuff beyond anti-TNF, these small molecule medications that, um, you know, less side effects, less risk for infection, they work faster. They're oral medications. We could get to a point where we're not even treating people with injectable medications or infusions. Now, they're still working on meds um, coming out that do that, but it just makes me wonder the possibilities. And that also makes me think about, should I have children? Should I have biologic children? Um, the hope for them not to have Crohn's obviously is there, but if they do, I feel so much brighter about their future than I did. And I was born in 1993, not that long ago, <laughs> but I feel like it's just so much brighter for them. Isn't that wild? It's, it's a depressing disease. And I, I personally feel like I have been fortunate to live the last 14 years fairly symptom free when it comes to abdominal pain and uh, my ability to eat and nausea, all the stuff that I was dealing with prior. I feel so fortunate about that. But I know that there are patients that are either newly diagnosed or just really suffering. And I hope that this gives you a little bit of hope for the future that maybe things can get better. And, and I feel like we're so much closer than we were when I was diagnosed. Another really neat session that I attended, and I believe it was new for this conference this year, was called IBD Shark Tank. And essentially, three providers came up and they had to sell their product or sell their treatment uh, to a panel. And I was excited about this because one of the doctors I remember working with, I know she would never remember me, but one of the doctors that I'd worked with at my pediatric nursing job was one of the presenters. She was presenting internal... Uh, nutrition. So as somebody with experience with that, I was on uh, tube feeding. I was really interested to hear her take on it. I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist and nutrition researcher, and I am here to convince you to unlock the extraordinary potential of exclusive enteral nutrition for all IBD patients in Slater. And I'm biased because I'm a patient who did it, and it was a struggle. Um, but I really liked hearing the research on it, how successful it is, 
but also hearing the panel talk about what does the patient want? Does the patient want to do this? Um, I really, that was a huge theme throughout this conference. I feel like we only have such a, a short amount of time with our providers. This was overwhelmingly, um, I just got the sense of empathy from all of the healthcare professionals there. They were really looking at what does the patient want? What is the patient feeling? Where is the patient mentally at? And sometimes I feel like we don't see that as often when we're in the office being seen by them in our short time frame appointments. So I really enjoyed that. I, I really enjoyed hearing them ask, what if the patient doesn't want this treatment? Um, and then being really just sympathetic to where a patient's at with their disease and what kind of treatments they're going to accept. I know when I was a young IBD patient and tube feeding with a very elemental formula was presented to me, that was one of the roughest times of my disease. And it's not because of the tube feeding. That was difficult, don't get me wrong. Learning to place a tube down my nose every night was difficult. But it got to a point where I was um, having this feed overnight. So I'd wake up full in the morning, not hungry. And then I was drinking shakes throughout the day. And when you think about your appetite and wanting to eat yummy foods <laughs> and the enjoyment that food brings, I had none. So I like that they're looking at that because it didn't feel like in the moment when I was young and we were being presented with this diet that that was really looked at. For two IBD patients, this was an intense conference, but it was so rewarding. Um, I, I just feel like we both learned so much and we both learned different things. Aaron and I had to spend some time going back and forth about our individual sessions that we attended. And I did get some questions more about the microbiology and how drugs are made and stuff like that. That is actually not what I attended. Aaron attended that because he is way smarter than me with that stuff. Um, he, he has a lot more knowledge on it. So I really encourage you to check out his social media to see more of that stuff. I focus more on the clinical, but yes, very intense conference. I slept nearly the whole day when we got back um, and a lot yesterday as well because sickness, germs, but it really was cool hearing straight from the experts' mouths and hearing the latest in the IBD world as well as alternative treatments and therapies. Um, we also heard about different alternative therapies like virtual reality. And that was so cool. That's one of the things that's going to be discussed on February 27th. Um, the speaker for that will be joining us. So it was just, holy cow. I really encourage that if you have a GI doctor or a GI uh, practitioner that you work with or even GI nurses, encourage them to check out the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, check out the AGA. I'm going to provide some links below that you can provide to them um, for them to stay in the loop with all these medications because I thought I was doing well and I, I need to keep up way better on what's going on. I just feel so overwhelmed with the information I got. Um, and you can encourage them to attend this conference in the future. It is a fun time. You learn a lot. There are some sessions at night, some receptions that break it up a bit and you get to network and, and chat with others. So um, it just a really great time. Make sure to check out the session that's happening on February 27th. I will provide the link below for how to register for that. I believe it's going to be happening on Zoom. And like I said, Erin and I will be sharing a bit of our experience and a couple of the speakers from the conference will be joining as well. And um, wow, it's what a wonderful experience. I also just want to say I feel like I really um, learned my method for doing this. Working alongside Aaron, we just got into our rhythm and, you know, we had our setups, our camera setups and our microphone setups and we packed so much into such a short time frame. And also I have to say thank you to CCF for, for flying us out there, letting us join in on this, but also giving us time 
to absorb what we were learning. I mean, they gave us a lot of freedom to pull from what we were learning and create it into um, content and short videos. So that was so much more helpful than I realized. We really had a lot of freedom to work on the stuff that we felt was important. And I think that we just, we rocked it. Thank you to CCF for having us. And I'm really hoping that I can attend this in the future because I just really enjoy learning about the future and my future. And thank you so much for watching this. I will see you guys very soon. I'm going to be coming out with a little uh, more of a fun vlog of Vegas because Zach and I did extend our trip a little bit just to explore around. So I, I'm going to have a vlog that's not affiliated with this. This is just our time, our fun time in Vegas. So look out for that. And yeah, thank you so much. I will see you guys very soon. Bye guys. Bye.